In this video, we're going to take a look at how to work with line segments inside of Autodesk Inventor inside of our new two-dimensional sketches. So here I've started a new file from scratch. In this case, I chose an inch template. However, if you want to use millimeter, that's fine. We're not going to do a lot of value input just now. Whatever one you're most comfortable with, go ahead and choose. And now we need to create a brand new two-dimensional sketch. So I can do that by starting new sketch up here from the sketch panel on the 3D model tab. I can also right click in the interface and choose new sketch from my marking menu. And here I'm going to begin on the XY plane. I can see my origin has already been projected as set up by my system. And I'm going to begin my line segment tool. I can choose a line from the create panel at the top of the screen, or I can right click and choose create line from my marking menu. Now, where you start your line is going to be dependent on how you want to design your parts. Do you want to go symmetric around an origin? Do you want to start off in left field and then start doing something else and kind of just rough your shape out? Totally up to you. But here we're just going to kind of learn about the line segment creation process. So I'm going to click somewhere over in space here. And as I move my cursor up, you can see a dynamic input is starting to appear. This allows me to specify my value of the line at the same time as creating it. If I were to type in a value and then hit enter, it will actually put the dimension on for me. This is known as persisting dimensions. At this point, I'm just going to doodle a little bit. So I don't want to actually make anything very precise right now. As I go straight up, you're also seeing a little geometric reference appear in front of the 90 degrees reference you're seeing. It's kind of a black and red symbol there. That is a vertical geometric constraint being added to this line. As I go through here, you're going to see other geometric constraints being added, which we're going to touch on that more as we go through the course. But for now, just understand that that's actually applying a vertical constraint to my line. So now when I go this way, I can see more geometric constraints appearing, more dimensional inputs appearing as well. But again, I'm just going to kind of jump around here and start clicking on just random points to specify my line segments. Now, another thing you're seeing is on the previous endpoints that I had, a little orange box appearing up here. That's known as a coincident constraint. Now, that coincident constraint means those two endpoints are touching so those lines don't come apart. The software is automatically going to do that for us so we don't have messy sketches. As I move my cursor here to the left a little bit more, you can see it's actually automatically doing a point alignment to my line up here at the top, this vertex. So it's trying to help me rough in my shape in a little bit easier manner. So as I go over here, you can see that's tracking as well from that vertex above it. How do I close this off? A couple ways you can do it. You can actually right click and choose close, and that will return it to its starting point of this set of contiguous line segments. Had I started and stopped my command a little bit more, then the close option would not be a viable option for this. So instead, I can actually just go here and choose the end point of that. You can see my dot on my cursor is going from a yellow color to a green color when I do that. And that signifies I am hitting that end point. Now, once you stop your line segment by hitting an end point of something or a midpoint or connecting to any geometry, you can see it actually stops your line command. However, it doesn't mean I can't start creating more segments. It just doesn't create a segment from that last endpoint. I can start again up here without having to actually restart the command. If I go to this point here, the origin, you can see the dot turns green. However, when I go to this dot, it actually allows me to keep on drawing. Going over to this line segment here, where I'm connecting onto it, you can see it stops that line segment. And now I have to restart it again. So I'll go up here and choose another point to start a new series of line segments. Now just go down, over, and then up. Once you're done with your line tool, you can right click and choose OK. You can also hit cancel, or you can hit the universal stop doing what you're doing button, the escape key, and that will get you out of it as well. Now let's say there's some line segments I don't want, such as down here, these two line segments were very similar in angles. In fact, they were really, really close. They got so close to the point where I think this should just be one complete line segment. So what I'm going to do is select on this line, and then I can right click and choose delete from my marking menu. Now I can grab the end point of this line and I can drag it over to this point here. Now I have one line segment instead of two, and it is connected to that end point for me. 
There are also other ways that you can get rid of geometry, such as just clicking on a line and then pressing your delete key on your keyboard. That will also get rid of a segment. If you're trying to grab multiple segments at once, you can use a crossing window. This is simply done by clicking and dragging with your mouse, and this is from right to left. Anything that the green touches, it will actually select that for deletion. And then I can just hit my delete key, or again, right click and choose delete. The opposite of the crossing selection will be window selection. That is from left to right. So here, anything that's fully inside of the box will be touched and selected. So only those three line segments. Now let's say you're trying to grab things. I'm just gonna do some undos here. And you wanted to not have these three lines on the inside chosen when you did your crossing window. If you hold down the control key, you can go back and do another crossing window to deselect items you don't want while you're holding down the control key. That's kind of a universal deselection. The shift key and the control key work very similar to each other inside of Autodesk Inventor when you pick too much and you want to deselect it out of your selection set. So what we saw in this video was how to work with our line segment tool inside of our two-dimensional sketches inside of Inventor.